what is going on youtube it's your boy michael back with another video and we're recovered we are back under control and i'm back to discuss with you our game this upcoming weekend saturday 3 30 tcu horn frogs taking on the texas longhorns in austin texas texas is coming off a okay win uh a good win they they defeated usc i believe the score was 37 to 14 uh they were playing at the same time that tcu was playing so obviously i didn't get to watch the game but i watched a little bit of it um of it yesterday and today and uh you know T tcu is coming off a pretty disappointing loss to ohio state uh 40 to 28 but TCU's two and one. Texas is two and one. Now they're meeting in Austin, starting off kicking off Big Twelve uh, conference football. Well, I mean, technically Oklahoma already kicked that off last week. But now TCU starts it off. Y'all know what I mean. So let's go ahead and hop into it, guys. Uh, first things first. I'm going to discuss something that might shock a little bit of you coming from me, but this is a trap game. Uh, I this is a trap game I believe uh, there's just like a little feeling inside of me that this Texas team might catch TCU might depending on you know this is a young team in TCU and how they're going to respond to that loss are they going to be high are they going to be low what are they going to be are they going to be so confident and go out there and destroy Texas like they have for the past four years or are they going to come out sputtering? Are they going to come out not so confident? You know, what whatever the case may be. And you're also on the road as well. You don't have the home crowd behind you. But hopefully, TCU fans travel well to this game. Uh, that That's just my quick thought process right there. Because I know Texas does have speed. They they do have better weapons than they had last year. Well, I mean, it's, it's the same guys. But these guys have a year under their belt. They're more mature, they're experienced. They can run better routes, they can find better ways to get open instead of like, go out there and play. So, all right, so that's just my quick thought. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into it, guys. So, on the road, Texas, they're, they look, they look like an average team when I watch them with, with explosive potential. Uh, Sam Ellinger is their quarterback. He has potential. He makes some very hard-headed mistakes, very dumb mistakes. Uh, doesn't make the best decision with the ball. Uh, but he is a good quarterback. I mean, he's at a D1 level. He's in a Power 5 school, and it's by, I know the team's not that great, but by a program of Texas football, Texas athletics in general. Just by that he is a talented young man. Uh, the offensive line, it's kind of tricky. Uh, I know they were horrible last year. This time around, you know, I still see them struggling just a little bit. And it just makes me think, like, can they hold up against this TCU defensive line? Can they open up running gaps for the, uh, for the running backs like Trey Watson and, um, and Kyle Porter and these guys? Can they... Can they open up lanes for them? And are they quick enough to hit that lane and burst? Like, do, do they have that gear? At wide receiver, they got they, they got some tools. They got, obviously, the number one public enemy, number one, Colin Johnson, who I think is a stud. He's that, what, like 6'4 wide receiver or so. He's that guy that's going to go up and get it. You can throw a 50-50 ball, and nine times out of ten, he'll probably come down with it. Uh, De a little Jordan Humphrey. This guy, he's got some potential. He's got speed. He's got good hands. And then talk about Duvernay. This guy has speed. This guy is a big-time player. He's got some good hands at the same time. So this uh, this TCU defense is going to be dealing with some speed. But then again, you know, we got speed of our own on defense. Uh, so that's basically – that covers it for, like, the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side of the ball, you know – you got a guy like uh, finally found out who he was, Brecken, Brecklin, Brecken Hager, or something like that. The guy that looks like a underwear model or something. Uh, Brecken Hager. You got a young, uh, a talented defense, but a very young defense. You got Chris, uh, 
Chris Boyd, you got BJ Foster, the freshman. You got Brandon Jones. Not sure if he's recovered from that ankle breaker from Darius Anderson last year, but uh, he's there. We got a uh, very good linebacker who I remember seeing, uh, Anthony Wheeler from Dallas Skyline. That dude was a stud. Um, and I know I say this sometimes, but I mean, it has happened. I remember watching Anthony Wheeler in the playoffs when Dallas Skyline played my Belton Tigers. Now this time, Belton didn't win. They actually got smashed like 49 to seven. And I remember watching Anthony Wheeler in that game. That Dallas Skyline defense that year was the best in Texas. The best defense statistically in Texas. Um, and he was the anchor of that defense. He's he's got he looks great. His physique looks great. He's got some good speed and he can and he can tackle. So put the, and they're also in a 3-4 defense. So it can get a little bit tricky, a little bit tricky. But uh going that's why we're going to go ahead and move into the offensive side of the ball because TCU has speed if we don't know already we got guys we got Jalen Rager we got Kevontae Turpin we got Tay Barber we got these guys and one thing that that I didn't notice or talk about in my reaction video to the Ohio State game where was Darius Davis where was Darius Davis like what in the world? Where was he? This dude can be electric. This dude can make plays. Where was he? Why did we not utilize him? Why did we not play him? Why? Like, I can't remember if he got on the field at all, but I do know no passes went his way. No reverses went his way or anything. That's like, what in the world happened? Uh, I, I want to see him in this game. I want to see us using different players. I want to see us getting guys open, catching the ball with our hands. Uh, and also, I want to see Sean Robinson in, in improve his accuracy a little bit. When in the last game, you know, he missed a couple of balls, a couple of balls that Jalen Rager could have had, a couple of balls that, uh, that Jalen Austin could have had. I want to see him get a little bit better because he is going on the road in a hostile environment. He, his, uh, First game was against Southern at home, went on the road to SMU where TCU fans beat out majority SMU fans. Then he was on a neutral site where the fans were like 60-40 in Ohio State's favor. Now you're going on the road in a hostile environment. Now, this isn't his first time. He went into Texas Tech last year for his first start ever, but I would imagine this stadium in Austin is going to be a little bit more packed and a little bit more loud than Lubbock was because that was already what the 10th game of the year and nobody was interested in Texas Tech football so but now you know Texas fans they're gonna show up they're two and one they're confident over that win again against USC so we're gonna talk about the offensive line here uh in three games I gotta say uh you know I, I'm not decided on who our starting left tackle is going to be at Austin Myers or Anthony McKinney. Um, I, I do not know who it is yet, who it is yet guys. I, I still think they're going to be swapping out at that position. Uh, but honestly, guys, I expect this offensive line to handle Texas's defensive line. I, I just do. Uh, I, I just do, guys. I can't. I can't see Texas dominating TCU I just can't I understand that they got four and five stars but guys the stars don't matter when you step on the field that was their rating when they were in high school it's not high school anymore you're learning a new scheme you're learn getting in a new environment you're facing different players from different parts of the country you're playing with new guys I don't care about these four or five stars I just don't I don't because if anything has told me, didn't really matter for the past four years. Ever since entering the Big 12, TCU is 5-1 and one against Texas. So top 10 recruiting classes and y'all are still playing like that. I have to be convinced that Texas can win a big game. I'm just not convinced at all that they can. Uh, moving to the defensive side of the ball. You know, we got guys, we got no injuries, which is a good thing. We have no injuries. Uh, everybody's everybody's back. We got LJ Collier. He returned last week. 
and he's going to get more better as he gets more playing time, gets more better in football shape because you don't get in football shape without playing football. You can practice, you can go in the weight room, but until you face someone that you've never seen before, until you get in front of a crowd and you go full speed and you're allowed to hit the quarterback, you can't get better. So he's a power guy. He will monster handle you. So that's just what I expect from this game. I expect our defensive line with a good rotation, we're going to be getting after Sam Ellinger. I expect Ty Summers to stay at linebacker for this game as well. Uh, you know, I expect – oh, wait, hold on. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I expect this game to uh, be handled by the TCU defense. One thing I also realized, guys, where was O'Shawn Mathis, our freshman? Uh, didn't see him. I don't know if he's heard. I don't know, but I haven't heard anything. So that's that. Uh, but also, I still expect Ty Summers to be at linebacker, Garrett Wallow to be the other line. I mean, this, this past game, like I said, guys, if y'all watched my last video, Garrett Wallow showed out, man. This guy... Oh, man, like I remember looking through the recruiting class and I saw a guy named Garrett Wallow. They didn't even have his picture. And I was like, OK, who is Garrett Wallow? So I looked him up on YouTube and it was pretty hard to find him. But I found his high school tape. And when I looked at it, I was just this guy is going to be a player like this guy hits. He hits great. He's got good speed. He looks like a really good football player and he's converted to linebacker so well. Southern, it was like, okay, he looked good. SMU, okay, he looked good, except for that one bad missed tackle. And then against Ohio State, this guy played phenomenal. I think maybe Noah Daniels might be our second starting cornerback uh, because after against Ohio State, you kind of learned where we're at on offense and on defense. Who won the starting jobs? Who won the rotational jobs? Who stood out? I want to see Noah Daniels start in this game. Jeff Gladney and Noah Daniels. I mean, we talked about Noah Daniels because we hadn't seen him much in the whole year, but he made play after play. We didn't hear about Jeff Gladney in the Ohio State game, which is good because they didn't throw his way and he shut down the receiver he was covering. In his games, he's going to be flying around. Uh, of course, with that 4-2-5 defense, I'm going to find it a little challenging for Texas to get guys open, especially if they want to take the deep ball shot. Uh, when it comes to speed, uh, I think this TCU defense can match uh, Texas's speed on offense. And I expect it to be a pretty good game, guys. I'm not going to lie. I expect it to be a pretty good game. My heart was leaning like it's going to be a battle. Texas TCU is going to get it, though. Or TCU is going to come out here and they are going to club Texas. I was going like swaying back and forth, back and forth. And guys, when I look at Texas and I look at TCU and I bring in the factor of a pretty big game that TCU played last week and it was just, it was a letdown. But one thing I have faith in is the veterans on that defense, the veterans on the offense. I believe because those of you that don't know, Kenny Hill, last year's starting quarterback, he is now a student coach for TCU. So I believe in practice, Kenny Hill is working with Sean like, hey, you got this. He's motivating him. He's getting him back up. He's getting his confidence back up. And I'm going to repeat what Gary Patterson said. You see those young guys who always hang their head after a mistake. Always they look defeated after they make a, a, a mistake. That wasn't Sean. He sat on the bench and he just watched the game. He collected himself and he went back out there and made plays. So Sean Robinson, right now, I don't have a problem with or a worry about him and his confidence. I want to see him make plays. I want to see him make the plays that he missed against Ohio State. Now, in this game, I want to see Darius Davis. I want to see Cavante Turpin utilize more. Jalen Rager, Jalen Rager is going to be Jalen Rager. Jalen Austin, I want to see him create separation. This is, you know, kind of what I struggled with, what I was 50-50 on when we found out that Omar Manning wasn't going to be with the team anymore. Omar Manning was that 6'3 guy who had the speed and the advantage on his corner. Jalen Austin, oh, he's a 50-50 guy. But 
I have faith in this offense. I have faith in this team. I have faith in Gary Patterson because he will get this team back up. He will get them motivated to go on the road. Also, one thing when I was looking through Twitter today, apparently Tom Herman came out and said, we're going to enjoy the win against TCU. Something tells me he kind of meant USC, but uh, if he did mean TCU, because, okay, he said we're going to enjoy the win against TCU, but we're here to win a Big 12 championship. Two things. Uh, you won't beat TCU. Secondly, you won't be in the Big 12 championship game. Uh, which leads me into my prediction. I think if what he said is really what he meant, he meant TCU and not USC. This team heard it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to get back to Gary Patterson at some point in this week. It's going to, the team is going to hear about it on Twitter because, you know, this day and age, young athletes are on Twitter and they see and hear everything. Uh, and which leads me into my prediction. It's going to be a road game. It's not going to be at night. It's going to be at 3.30. It's going to be on ESPN2, I believe. Uh, oh, wait, no, I think it's going to be on Fox. I think it, it, it's one of those guys. It, it's one of those. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't have that specific, easy information to have. I just woke up and just started looking at Texas. And then I came out here to do the video. Uh, but here's my prediction. The game is going to start off good in my mind. I think it's going to start off good. Uh, one thing I want Sonny Cumbie to do, what I would like to see Sonny Cumbie to do when it came to slow starts, realize what was working against Ohio State. Now, not only did that work against Ohio State, but I think that can work with any team we face from here on out. Start fast. Get comfortable. Get Sean Robinson in a rhythm. Get the running backs in a rhythm. Get them going. Quick passes down the field. Get it going. Start that early. Don't wait two drives in and then all right here we go we got to start out quick we're on the road all right uh i believe texas might settle down in the second quarter but i just see tcu actually you know handling this game uh i'm sorry that's just the way i see it that's the way i feel about it now again there is a little part of me that this is a trap game texas has some confidence they gotta win against a storied another storied program and their confidence is high it's going to be rocking in that stadium but i've kind of settled on the tcu horn frogs guys you know after what they showed me they didn't show me that they're going to be losing the games that they should win they're they're not going to do that that they i just don't see this team doing that i don't believe the veterans on this defense is going to let that happen i don't believe nico small is just going to sit there and let the young guys make mistake after mistake ty summers is not going to let guys make mistake after mistake ben banagu is not going to sit there and make let guys make mistake after mistake jeff gladney Arico evans we got some leadership so i expect this game to be in tcu's favor the whole way but like I said, in the second quarter, I believe Texas will be in that rhythm and they will make it a game. But when it comes to the second half, I just think TCU is going to run away with it, guys. So my prediction for this game is going to be it's going to be TCU 38, Texas 17. That's what I got, 38 to 17, because I think. Texas defense, they are a good defense. Let's not undermine that. I think TCU and Texas both have the top two defenses in the Big 12. So their defense is good. They're not going to let TCU get into the 50s or 60s that easily. They're not. They're going to challenge T uh, uh, TCU because they do have a little bit of speed of their own. And they do have talented young guys on that defense too. So... I see them making it a little bit of, of a game, but I just see TCU running away with it, guys. I, I just do 38 to 17. That's my prediction. Um, and, you know, that's just Gary Patterson continues to whoop Tom Herman's behind. I guess that'll do it for this video, guys. Uh, 
comment below if you have any questions or concerns or if y'all want to debate with me, you know. Uh, but just a quick thought. Um, let's keep it classy, guys. Uh, when it comes to ignorant comments, when it comes to unclassly, unclassy comments, guys, I don't play that game. I just don't and I won't and I just won't respond. I won't do any of that. So just keep it classy, keep it about football, and let's just debate. That's what I wanna do. I, I would like to debate. I wanna talk football and not get personal or anything. All right, guys? So just a quick thought. Um, those of you that are traveling to the game, travel safe. It's I-35. You know, that's that, that interstate can be a little bit of tricky sometimes with construction and stuff like that. So please travel safe, guys. Uh, and if you're watching from home, Hope we win, guys. Uh, I think we win. Follow me on Twitter. I'll leave the link to my Twitter below. Subscribe to my channel if you're new, guys. And so uh, give this video a thumbs up, please. I would really appreciate it. And have a great week, guys. And go Frogs.